Hello everyone, welcome to episode 17 of Very Fun Adventures. My name is Tanya and I'm coming to you from Southeast Minnesota where my family and I run Firefly Berries, which is a fruit farm that specializes in strawberries, Concord grapes, and naturally dyed yarn, which is our Very Fun Yarns line. So thanks so much for coming. If you are a new viewer, thank you for checking us out. And if you are returning a viewer, thank you for coming back. So I am here today with a quick little podcast before I head out. My husband and I are still scheduled to head to Hawaii for a couple weeks. Fingers crossed that everything still goes well with the world. Um, but I wanted to get in a little episode for you. Um, hopefully you have also seen that I put up an organizational video about destashing and organizing my yarn as well since last time. But I wanted to show you the projects I was working on and just talk a little bit about what I'm taking along for my travel knitting, which I find to be the really hard thing to pack because I want to take all the things. And this time we're planning to be gone for almost three weeks. And so how much knitting can one get done in that time? A lot. So anyway, before I get on to that, let me show you what I've finished. I have finished just one project since last time. And that is my 10 year old's flax sweater. Um, I did the worsted weight pattern. Now this one is, this is kind of um, going to be stretched out because he was wearing it and he gave it back to me. And I'm supposed to fix something. I'll show you. So this is the flax sweater. You can see right here what I need to fix. This is, if you look close, if those of you who have cats will know what that is, they will need on you. So this is the back and then the front. And I held fingering weight um, berry fun yarns, the berry tough confetti color in rainforest with a mohair. So the two of them together gave me that worsted weight gauge. Hold on one second. I think I have a cat meowing to be let out of the room. Okay, sorry about that distraction. My cat wants to go in, she wants to go out. It drives me nuts. So anyway, so I finished his flax light and the reason that it, it looks kind of stretched out and has this little pull that I need to fix is because he has been wearing it night and day. He wears it to bed. In fact, I think I'm gonna to have to pull out my gleaner because with the mohair in it, it is really, you can see the fuzz. It's starting to um, pill a little bit, which is totally what it probably, it should do because that's what mohair does. Um, so I'm gonna, repair that and wash it one more time for him before I leave since he's been wearing it so much and um, and then he'll be all set to go but that is the flax pattern and I don't know if I said this but that is by tin can knits so that is my only um, finished object since I came to you at the end of 2021 but I had a flurry of cast ons in the new year so my oldest son went back to college on January 2nd, and he goes to college at um, St. Olaf, which is in Northfield here near Minnesota, where we live. And the colors there are black and gold. And so I, I always tell my kids and my family that when I miss you or I worry about you, I knit you something. So I got a whole sock done. Plus, I am on the heel of the second one. In fact, if you look close, you can see I am turning the heel. This yarn is, it is from Simply Sock, uh, Simply, Simply Yarn, I always get Simply Socks Yarn Company, and it is their post yarn, which is 75% Superwash Corydale, 25% nylon, and it's about 393 yards per 100 gram skein. Um, this is the second time I have knit with this yarn, and I do, I love it. It's a little bit thicker, which I don't mind. I'm a looser knitter. I already knit with um, size zeros, DPNs is my preferred choice of um, sock knitting. And um, I find that this is a little bit more uh, rustic, but it's certainly not crunchy. It's still very soft and it does soften up after you wash it, but it wears really well. The Corydale really wears well. And since, um, you know, my son is 
hard on his socks because he still he washes them himself and all that jazz. I thought this would be a perfect, a perfect base for him. So yeah, so I'm hoping to finish the second one before I leave, which I still have about five days, so I don't think that will be a problem because I'd never really counted before or added up how much time it took me to make a pair of socks, but with the stripes, it's so easy. And I can do about 15 rounds, which is about, that's not correct, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's about 20 rounds. It looks like I did here. About, I did about 20 rounds of the ribbing. And I can do three stripes in about 30 to 40 minutes. So it makes it way more fun when you figure that out because then I know I only have so many more stripes to do and I'm going to be done. So my plan is to get those finished because I'm going to gift those to him for a Baha'i holiday when we come back called a Yamiha. So that is that whip. Those are in my fun Whimsy Stitches box bag. Okay, now I have a lot more whips. And as I was thinking about what I was going to take with me on vacation, I decided that I was not going to take my Vertices Unite. Now, I did talk about my Vertices Unite on the last podcast. I still love it, and I have made good progress, but I've kind of stopped knitting on it for a little bit. Because originally I was hoping to have it finished to take it with me and I quickly realized that that was a lot more knitting than I was going to have time for. So I decided this one it's a little too big and clumsy for me to take with when I go away mostly because it's five different colors and like taking it on an airplane would be tricky because the the project itself is large and the um, I'd have to have a couple balls and it just would be too much. But Oh, that's the wrong one. This is my Leia sweater. I will show you that one in a second. Let's see, where did I put the... Oh, I'm, I had to move some of my projects to different bags because they were outgrowing them. And this is one of them, so I just forgot what I had it in. So this is my um, nice sweater size bag with the birds on. And I believe it's from Prairie Bag Works. Does that sound right? I don't see her tag in here. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. Pray bag. Okay. Sorry that I don't have that in my brain. Oh yeah, Prairie Bag Works. There's the tag on the bottom. Okay, so here, as a reminder, what my Vertices Unite looks like. It's supposed to be, it's a pa pattern by Stephen West. And here kind of is the layout. It's different sections in different colors and combined together. And I am on section C. There's a lot of needles I have going on here. Okay, so it starts, see how large this is already? It is, it's crazy how big it is. It starts over here at this end and you do this stripey section here first. And then I did this smaller section here. You pick up stitches and I knit this section some short rows in there See the end it's just sort of and then you pick up stitches between the two so you can kind of see the um, excuse me, my nose is itching you can see the V down there where my stitch marker is where I started to pick them up and then you go across back and forth now I'll hold this up closer so you can see mm, maybe you can't this one I love the color it's called mistletoe crush and it's by Lavender Loon, you can kind of see. It's pink with different greens in. But I did not realize when I picked it out, I wasn't really thinking obviously, because if I had been, I would have thought about it better. Um, the green and the, the darker green and the dark grays are really popping more than I thought they would. I was really hoping it would blend more. However, I still like it, so I think I'm just gonna tweak um, a little bit the next section that runs next to it is section four. So this yellow section on Stephen West pattern is the um, mistletoe crush that I was showing you. And this is the first section. So I've done this section and this section and I'm right here. 
This section over here is supposed to be, if I follow his suggestion, a darker pink, um, more like almost like my sweater a little bit. But I think I'm gonna do the more pastel-y pink that, more, it's more of a dusty pink, it's this one. That is uh, Berry Fun Yarns Jewel Fingering in Dusty Rose because I think it will really pull out the lighter pink in this green color. But anyway, that's my plan. And I still like it, but like I said, it is huge mungus. So if I hold it up, it's all ready. And I have it on 40 inch needles, which it could be on. It's probably already six feet across. And I still have a couple more sections. Granted, the other sections are the smaller sections, so um, hopefully it will not be super huge, but I know I'm gonna like it. I just don't wanna take it to travel in this big bag with me. It's not quite as compact, even as a sweater, because it's so many different colors that I have to juggle. It's not just like having um, a sweater where you're just knitting the same color, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna leave that one home. Um, the other one that I pulled out on accident to show you is my Leia sweater. I have done a little bit of work on that. That is a pattern uh, by Isabel Kramer, I believe. Pretty sure. And this is the t-shirt actually. And I was, again, originally thinking, oh, this would be great to take with me when I go on vacation because we're going somewhere warmer. And it's short sleeve, it's in a sport weight. But I decided I am knitting like I said before, I knit loose, so I'm knitting this sweater on size two needles, which is pretty small. And it's taking me a lot longer to go around than I thought it would. But it has this beautiful lace pattern in the yoke, and then it has, it's pretty much just straight knitting now, from now until the, till the end. And I'm knitting it on my um, Knit Picks um, circular, I think they're Caspian wood needles. But yes, I do love this. And I think what I'm gonna do, I decided I'm gonna put it away for a little bit and then I'm going to uh, pull it out again when I come back so that it's ready for the spring when things start to warm up here in Minnesota, which really realistically isn't until April or so. Although I do think the sleeve will be um, big enough that I could wear like a long sleeve fitted t-shirt underneath it and that would be okay. And this is just in a bag my mom made for me with some cats on it. Okay, next project. I am going to take this one along because it fits in this little bag. This is my Muscle Burra hat by Isolde Teague and I have not done a ton of knitting on this one but I have done some. I really should put a stitch marker in there so I remember, but I'm hoping to finish this one on the airplane. This is a perfect airplane knit because it is small. It's one skein and it is in the, oh gosh, I forget again. Oh, it'll, I'll connect, Blah. I will connect to my project page for you below so you can see, but this is a lavender loom skein. It's sparkle, bronze Stellina, I think. And this is the hat that many people have been knitting for the last year or so. It starts with a um, belly button cast on of sorts. And then you pretty much just increase until you get to the right amount. And then you just knit the whole tube and then you do your decreases and then the hat folds in on itself. It's a wonderful pattern because, for lots of reasons, but because Yuzolda Teague um, does a great chart for you so based on what gauge you're getting she tells you the stitches so you can use it for fingering or sport or even worsted weight and um, just follow the chart that she has made in the pattern it is a paid for pattern on Ravelry but it is well worth it so that is the muscle burra hat and that one is coming with me Let's see what else we have over here. Ah, yes, this one I think I had just cast on when I came to you last. And this is the, or maybe I was about to cast on. Maybe it was dream knitting, I can't remember. This is the Advent Wallop 219 
pattern, I think. Although I'm using that pattern very loosely because she does a lot of different things between each color that I am not doing. So mine is pretty simple. And I am using the Berry Fun Yarns Holiday Countdown Kit from 2021, which was 12 different mini skein sets. Not sets, 12 different mini, gram, mini skeins in 20 grams each. So what I ended up doing is I wound my mini skeins in half. So they're 20 grams, so I did 10 grams, and I made them into two different balls. So what I'm doing is I'm doing all the pink, I'm doing half of the pink, I'm doing half of each one, and then when I get to the 12th one, I'm going to go back to number one and do the rest of them. Now you'll see, if you look at this closely, <laughs> this one is not the same size as this one. And that's because right about here, my little battery on my little scale that I use broke. And so I was eyeballing it. But you know what? I don't really care. It's still going to be fun. Um, and I'm still going to love it. And nobody is going to really notice. But it is a... Um, it's one of those cowls where you knit in the round. Like a really big sock. Um, but it's about that... It's about that far around. So you can get an estimate. And then um, it will wrap twice around my neck. When it's all done. And then you did a provisional cast on. And you will graft the um, two ends together when you're done. So I'm doing um, the pattern is paid for so I'm not going to tell you too many details but in between each color the pattern designer gives you lots of different um, ways to transition. I'm only using two. I'm doing every other. I'm doing an eyelet round and then I do a purl round and then eyelet and then purl. And what I do so that I don't get, you know how sometimes when you change the pattern and you go from one color to the other, and I should say sometimes, it's pretty much all the time, um, it, it looks like, um, like if I did a pearl here, my pearl would actually be in this color. So once I add into the new color, I knit one full round and then I do whatever it is I'm going to do, whether it's an eyelid or a pearl. So again, this one's going to be perfect for me to take on the airplane as well because it's just knitting around and around. It's on round circular needles that are wooden and aren't looking very um, scary to TSA agents. So I am looking forward to that. So I have done um, eight. I think I'm, I'm almost done with the eight color, eighth color. So I still have four more to, to go. Um, I don't know if I will get the first of each of those four done before I leave or not, but I will definitely be winding up those other um, balls and putting them in my bag to take with me. Okay, let's see what I have left over here. I think I still have a couple left. So this is the Zorzel shawl. I talked about it um, last time, but I actually cast it on since then. Um, yeah, my picture isn't very good, so I'll put the picture in like I did last time. And I am making, I just, I just barely started it, but I do like how it's looking. Um, I have a, a sort of a purple and a pink, and it's asymmetrical with some short rows. And I am using the, the purpley color, the darker color, is the Vidal Vidalana Linen Jewel by Knit Crate. And it's a merino linen and silk blend. And then the pale yellow, or not the yellow, the pale pink is a Molly Girl, Molly Girl yarns. Oh, I'm sorry. This one is called Midsummer Rose. And the Molly Girl one is called, I'm gonna find my tag here. Molly Girl yarns. And this one is in the baseline, fingering weight, 75 merino, 25% nylon in the beauty school dropout colorway. So yeah, so I haven't gotten very far in this one, but it's very enjoyable. And both yarns have been very soft and pleasant to knit with. I just cast on so many things all at the same time that I was feeling a little overwhelmed and had to start picking. Um, I do that sometimes. I find that I like to cast on a lot but if I cast on too many then I get overwhelmed and it it's actually not because I don't like them but because I want to knit them all and I can't knit them all at the same time right you have to pick so um, my gauge is a little looser than I would like 
um, but I think I'm gonna go with it. I'm already knitting it on a three, a US three, um, which I think the pattern says to knit it on like a six. So um, I think I think it'll be okay because it is a shawl and it's drapey, but I'll just have to kind of watch my gauge and can't get I can't get too relaxed because then it'll be um, a little too gauzy for me. I like it to have a little more a little more warmth when I when I knit shawls. And again, this one is in another uh, Rick from Whimsy Stitches cat bag that I love. Okay, then there's one last thing that I have already cast on that I wanted to show you. And that is a sweater for my husband. This is just in a bag that I made. Um, and this is the So Basic sweater. And I'm gonna show you the pattern. Let me see if I can turn this around. This is the So Basic sweater by Maxim Sear. It's a basic sweater and it has a little like ribbing on the sleeve. And then here, I would say it's a unisex pattern. So it's just a long sleeve, basic kind of pattern. Um, I believe he calls for fingering weight yarn. Yes, but again, I'm a loose knitter, so I am actually making it in sport weight and I'm getting the same gauge I would at fingering weight, even going down a needle size. So I just cast on, this is, um, my Berry Tough Sport for Berry Fun Yarns colorway in Under the Sea, which I love. I really love this base. It is a, it is a base that I have not promoted enough. Um, this year in 2022, I will be talking more about it and sharing more pattern ideas and things to do with it. But it is an 80-20 base. You can use it for socks because it does have a nylon with the merino blend, but it's also really nice for sweaters. I didn't mention that my Leia sweater that I showed you before, the pink one, was also um, is also being knit in the Very Tough Sport. So this is what I have so far. I actually learned a new technique. I learned a new technique. It is the tubular cast on. I do not know why it took me so long to learn it. I was just, you know how it is. You don't want to learn something new because it takes time and you have to get out of your rhythm to learn it, but I sat down and I learned it and I did really well. I did have a bit of a mishap, however. There's a section in the pattern where it says, for a size medium and triple XL do this. And I was like, oh, well that's not the size I'm making. So I just stopped reading and went on to the next page. Well, it turns out underneath it, it says for size medium, for size large do this, for size extra large do this. For, and it's just different details for each size. Well, I was supposed to increase 28 stitches in that one round before I started to do the um, short row shaping, and I didn't do that. So I went on and I started all my short row shaping, and then I was like, why are there so few stitches on the back side of this? This doesn't make any sense. I was actually almost completely done with my short row shaping, and I was like, ah. So then I ripped the whole thing out. Um, luckily, um, I, had st I did have the right amount of stitches for my ribbing, so I didn't have to redo the tubular cast on and the ribbing. So I just ripped back to um, one row past the ribbing, and then I started again. But I like it. I think it's gonna be a nice sweater. It doesn't look like much right now. It's just a neck, uh, neck band, but um, my husband and I have been married for almost 21 years. It will be 21 years in February and I have never knit him a sweater. I've always been daunted by the sheer size of the sweaters. So, and the other thing is he, he gets hot easily. So I didn't want to knit him a worsted weight sweater for the first sweater I made him because I was afraid if it made him too hot then he wouldn't like wool sweaters. But I, so I went with sport. Um, but I do think that he'd be fine in a worsted weight sweater. I just think I'd have to knit it maybe at a looser gauge for him. So anyway, I'm taking this with me. I'm not gonna take this on the airplane with me. I'm gonna take it in my checked baggage to do when I'm there, um, just because it's kind of big to carry in my backpack while I'm walking from airport to airport. So that, oops, I forgot to put my pattern back in. 
I think that is the end of the things that I actually am physically working on at this moment. I do have quite a few um, kind of dream plans. I am going to be taking this along. Um, if you haven't watched the organizational video, you should go back and watch that if you want to see more of my scrappy projects. I talk about them on there. But these two huge magic cake balls I created when I did my reorganization and de-stashing. And I'm going to be taking these along as well, um, probably in my packed suitcase. They might end up on the airplane with me on the way back um, if I get my other things done because I'm going to make a crochet granny blanket. And you know, sometimes I just, I'm in the mood to crochet instead of knit. So um, yeah, that'll be a striped granny, granny stripe blanket by Lucy of Attic 24. That's the pattern I tend to use. And the last thing I want to show you before I say goodbye for a little while is just that other two other skeins that are on my dream knitting that I'm planning to take with me. Um, oh, pause. There was one more. I was There's gonna... one more project that I have not been working on recently, but I am going to take with me when I go because I'm going to give myself the deadline of finishing it before I can cast on another pair of socks for myself. And they're beautiful and I love them and I want them to be finished so I really just need to bite the bullet and work on them. And that is my Dreaming of Paris Socks by Hogi Locatelli. The pattern is by. And I think I started, these were a Mother's Day cast on and there's, I'm knitting them in a merino cashmere nylon base so it's really soft. I know I will love them. In fact, right now, just feeling them makes me wonder why I put them down. But I think I put them down because they're kind of fiddly. You're, you have to deal with two skeins of yarn, two colors. So there is a ribbing, there's a little lace section, and then there is the stripey section. Um, and then you do the heel in a solid color, and then I think the toe is in this color. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I do like these a lot, and you don't you don't have a lot of ends to weave in because she just has you carry the yarn. Let's see if I can see it. You just carry the yarn um, right here down the inside because you're just switching your color every other round. But um, I don't know. There's something about the fiddling of the two skeins that was making me feel like I didn't want to knit them. I think, but. These are um, one of a kind, sorry, not available, Berry um, Fun Yarns Jewel um, Sock Yarn, MCN 801010. So those I'm going to take along. And then once I finish this pair of socks, then I can cast on, I am going to just wind up some other sock yarn and take it with because, you know, socks you can finish pretty quickly. I mean, if I if I'm knitting a lot and I, we're going to be, we have our own car and we're going to be traveling around and looking at stuff. Um, my husband gets car sick, so he tends to, if he doesn't drive, so he tends to drive and then I knit. So I know I'm going to have a lot of knitting time, but I pulled out two of my most favorite sock skeins and I'm going to wind up. And the first one is the, um, it's by Show Me Yarn and it is a self-striping rainbow called Bell Bell Star. It's on their boot heel base, which is an 80 merino 20 nylon. And I love this yarn. I've, I've got, I don't know if I have any socks in this base, but I've knit it before. I've knit them for my husband and my son. They have pairs of that base. So that's one I'm going to cast on. And then the other one is put the tag up here, is from Stranded Dye Works. It's her BF, his BFL nylon, and it is in the Don't Touch Your Face colorway. It was one of two um, colors that he came out with during the beginning of COVID. I also have another one called Wash Your Hands, I think. Don't Touch Your Face, face and Wash Your Hands. And it's 80% um, Superwash BFL, 20% nylon. It just looked so tropical and fun to me that I wanted to take it with. And then I pulled out some mini skeins. I think these are still from One Twisted Tree, which is a long, she hasn't been dying for quite a while. 
Um, and so I'm not sure. I was going to kind of see where the how the color comes, how the blue comes out and where it falls if I end up doing the peach as my heel, toe and cuff, or maybe I'll do the heel in this one and the toes and cuff. I haven't decided exactly. I'll kind of see. But I'm going to wind these up before I go and take them with me wound up. So I think that's it for now. I hope you're all doing well. I look forward to chatting again when I come back and hopefully maybe even I'll have a little footage of some knitting and things I saw while I was away. Uh, but until then, happy knitting, happy making, and stay healthy, and we'll talk soon. Goodbye. Thank you.